The first step when you're receiving a DB600 system is the unboxing and identifying the key components that make up the system. So what we've got here are the three boxes that you'll receive with every system. Uh, this is the instrument tube, the long skinny heavy box, uh, the DB600 buoy, the flotation system, and this is the box for the all-in-one monitoring system, the AO1. So this is the all the power supply and the intelligence to measure whatever sensors you have fitted and send that data in real time to your data destination. Now, um, the key to each box is that each box is labeled with a QR code. So the QR code can be scanned uh, and then you can open up the resource relevant to, the, to whatever is inside the box. So um, on the AR1, it's got two QR codes, one for the AR1 manual and one for the quick start guide that uh, steps you through the assembly process of all these components. So now we're going to unbox each of the systems and we'll look at what is included in each box. So now we're going to identify each of the parts from within the box. So this is the DB600 box. So the main component is the DB600 buoy, but inside that box is the collar that locks the instrument tube inside the tube, the DB600. So make sure you find the collar before you get rid of the box. Uh, then we've got the instrument tube, which goes down the center of the DB600. So this has got the, um, the chain uh, cable tied to the body of the tube, and it's got the um, mounting plate for the AO on top of the instrument tube. So we will need to cut some cable ties to get those pieces out. They're just held in place with cable ties for shipping, you will need to cut those cable ties to do the full assembly. Okay? And then we have the AR1 with a lot of components inside that box. So we have the uh, bird spikes that has the QR code on how to assemble the bird spikes on top. We have the navigation lantern. Now, when it's shipped like this, the lantern is switched off internally. So you need to unpackage um, it and take the base plate off to turn the switch inside back on. Um, make sure you do that, or once you deploy the system, the lantern will not flash, okay? Um, also included in the box is if you've got a, a water quality based system, we include a one meter cable that allows a song to sit down at the bottom of the tube and the cable runs up inside the tube to the AR1 that sits on top. Uh, and we have a, a pack of spares, um, tools and consumables. So I'm not going to go through the contents of the AR1 too much in this video. We've got another video that describes the operation of the AR1. This is mainly the physical assembly of the parts required for the tube, the DV600, and mounting the, the telemetry system on top. Okay? So we're going to go ahead, uh, we're going to take off all these cable ties and we'll start to do the assembly. So now we're installing the instrument tube inside the DB600. The only key to pay attention to here is that this is an alignment notch that needs to be located to the right spot inside the DB600 buoy. So as you um, are installing it, just lower it down and make sure that it goes into the notch. Okay. Now this is the locking collar that was included inside the box with the DB600. So the locking collar includes two split pins that you need to keep if you want to use these to lock the pins on the top of the DB600. I'll show you where these come in later, but just keep track that these pins are included with the locking collar. Okay, so the locking collar has um, two M8 bolts with nylock nuts. So the nylock nuts are used to ensure that the um, locking collar does not come loose over time. So the key with the, the um, locking collar is that this goes underneath the buoy and clamps on the instrument tube here so that then the instrument tube will not lift out, out of the buoy once you've tightened that up. So I'm going to go ahead and fasten this on to this position on the underside of the DB600. We've also pulled off the top plate from on top of the instrument tube. Now this plate is secured to the underside of the AO1 
And that is what allows you to easily attach and detach the AO1 from the DB600 system. So um, we'll put these uh, pins aside for a moment. The key is that the AO1 includes the three M6 bolts that you use to secure the plate to the underside of the AO1. Okay. So you need to pull each of these bolts out and we're going to show you the technique to fasten these bolts onto the, onto the plate. So now we're going to use the bolts that we removed and we're going to secure the plate on the underside of the AR1. So the key is that you align the plate so that it meets up with the three holes from where the bolts came out. And then we're going to use a long Allen key, a four millimeter Allen key, and it needs to be long to hold the screw while we tighten the nylon nut. So the key is you use the Allen key to go between the panels and push the screw in from that side and then put on the washer, the nut, and then use a 10 millimeter wrench to tighten. Repeat the process for the other ones. So again, you put the screw on the other key first, you slide it between the solid panels, and then you push it up from the underside, put in the washer, the nylon nut, and then tighten. Now I'm not doing them up fully yet, I'm going to wait until I have all the screws in position, and then I will fully tighten. So now it is secured to the bottom side of the AR1. So we can then put it in position on the top of the DVC terminal and we use these pins to secure it. Okay, so now we've mounted the, D the AR1 on top of the DVC terminal using these pins to hold that plate in position. Okay, now once you put the pins in position, you need to stop them from coming out once you deploy the buoy. So for security, you may want to use a lock. So a lock can be used to go through the hole at the end of the pin and lock it in position so you can't undo it. The alternative is you can use these pins that I showed you from the locking collar kit where you can put the pins through and then bend the ends of the pins out or you can put a cable tie through but just use a, a heavy duty cable tie so it doesn't um, get uh, damaged in normal deployment and eventually work its way loose, okay? So once we put the DB600 on the top, we can actually pivot the DB600 by removing a pin and sort of head out to one side. And so that allows us access to the instrument tube as well as access into the bottom of the AR1. Remembering that this port on the bottom of the AR1 
provides access to the power switch and allows you to plug a USB cable into the bottom. Okay. One of the most common steps that often gets overlooked is the greasing of the cable at both the AO1 end and at the, the instrument end inside the, the instrument tube. So this is used if you're using, for example, a, a wire side XO song. Um, these are wet mate connectors, but they only last if you apply the correct grease um, at deployment and continue to reapply every six months or so. Uh, so the key is that you use uh, high quality grease. We recommend Crytox grease. Um, I've got a little applicator here. And so what you do is you make sure that the, the inside of the connections have a little bit of grease on all of them. So repeat on, on all ends of the cable. Grease up the, the rubber parts of the pins. Do on the connector on the bottom of the AR1 and do on the top of the connector on the um, XO song. And so then when you when you make that connection the grease will keep the water out and make sure that, that those pins do not corrode over time okay if you have any pin corrosion it's probably because your grease application is not right, right? the chain that we ship with the db600 is designed to have the DB600 weighted correctly so that it sits at the right height in the water. If you want to use another chain, you can't just put a, a lot more heavy chain on the bottom or you may um, have the DB600 sit too low in the water. So we actually recommend using um, a fairly light duty rope. Um, yeah, it's about half inch, 10 millimeters um, diameter. So it depends on the the environment that you're deploying the buoy as to the type of rope that you'll use, but we find that this is a good solution. Now, one of the keys is that at the bottom of the instrument tube, we have a D shackle, and then we have a one meter length of, of chain. Now, how you connect from your mooring system to that chain is up to you, but we would recommend that you have a, another D shackle or a bow shackle, and you would use a thimble, a stainless steel thimble, to uh, protect the rope for where it goes onto the D shackle. It will work without a thimble if you just tie your knot directly onto the D shackle or onto the bottom of the chain, but it may wear out over time. And so we find this is a common wear point, and for that reason, we recommend using a stainless steel thimble. So I will show you the steps on how to tie a knot to connect the rope to that uh, onto the thimble. With whatever length of rope you've got, the key is that you get make a loop in the end of the rope, a couple of feet long, 60 centimetres, half a metre, depends on your measurements. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to make a small loop in the end, and then we're going to line up our finger along the side of that loop. And so then we take the, the free end and we wrap it around our finger as many times as the rope will allow us and then we pull out our finger and put this through the hole where our finger used to be. Okay, so once you've got it through the end, you then just gently massage it to meet in the rope and then get your thimble, put it inside and then slide the knot up to the end making sure that both ends are tightened and you really want to get that knot as tight as possible so really pull on it and even to the point where you put a lot of weight on it now that's a good thimble knot what i then do just to make sure that this doesn't come loose is i use a cable tie So that, that end 
cannot work its way loose at the time. Okay? And then again, just make sure it's nice and tight. And that's where your D shackle would go through to connect to the end of the shackle. Okay? So um, similar, at the weighted end of the bottom of your mooring line, you would use another thimble and another shackle to connect to your chain or whatever it is that you're using um, to connect to your mooring pump weight at the bottom. Okay? So yeah, we find that's where a lot of wear and tear occurs. So highly recommended to use a thimble. Okay. All right. Um, for all other steps, I'd recommend you watch the AO1 video. Um, obviously, the two remaining steps. Uh, that you mount the lantern and you mount your bird spikes on top. So bird spikes go first and then lantern goes in the gap in between the bird spikes. Okay? Um, and then, yeah, turn it on, connect up your instruments, make sure you're online, uh, have a look at wherever your data is going and make sure that your readings are correct. And I would leave the system assembled for 24 hours or so so that you can make sure that communications are good, the system's charging, um, data updates to the web are reliable, and only then, once I've done a full test in the office, would I um, plan on deployment in the water. Okay? Alright, thank you. Um, any questions, of course, just talk to your support staff and uh, we'll be happy to assist you. Thanks.